Well, welcome to the program today. I'm so glad that you've joined us. You know, I've had the privilege in my ministry career to write over 100 books. I think now the total is about 116, and uh, I'm always writing more. And one of those books is called Living Courageously. You can face anything if you'll just do it afraid. You know, there's a great, big, wonderful, adventurous life waiting for each one of us. But it's not just going to fall on us. And to be honest, we can't just pray it into existence. Very often when we pray, what happens is God shows us something to do. I don't want you to forget that. We're partners with God. He has a part and we have a part. We cannot do his part and he will not do our part. So we have to be ready to be active and to be obedient and do the things that God asks us to do. Fear is a factor in everybody's life. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind and a spirit, the Amplified Bible says, of discipline and self-control. Well, we know that fear comes first to our mind. And then when we receive fearful thoughts, they begin to affect our emotions. So fear can make you shake, can make you nervous. All kinds of lies come to our mind. You can actually feel so so weak and incapable that you're not sure that you can put one foot in front of the other. But that spirit is not from God. And many people spend their whole life running from things that they're afraid of. Or maybe as you become a believer in God and you learn that you can pray, you spend a lot of your time praying that God will take the fears away. God, help me not to be afraid. Take away the fear. Take away the fear. Well, I learned something about 25 years ago that was a little bit of a new way to look at fear. And I learned it through a story that I read about a woman who had been controlled all of her life by fear. She wouldn't drive. She wouldn't go out at night. She basically was trapped inside of her house, was just afraid of absolutely everything. And she was a, was a Christian. She was a believer. She was talking one day with a Christian friend and uh, moaning, complaining, murmuring, which we're all pretty good at, about all these fears that she had in her life. Well, I'm just so afraid. I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. I'd love to do this, but I'm afraid. I'd love to drive, but I'm afraid. I'd love to go out at night, but I'm afraid. And her friend just looked at her and gave her one little piece of advice. Well, why don't you just... Do it afraid. <laughs> See, the thing is, is when God tells us fear not, or if you take like Joshua chapter 1, when he was called to finish what Moses had started, how would you like to have that in front of you to take over Moses' job? Uh, and just several times, just in the first chapter, God tells him not to fear. Be bold, courageous. Don't fear. And the only reason why God ever gives us in the scripture for not fearing is for I am with you. <laughs> fear not for I am with you. And in 1 John 4, the Bible teaches us that perfect love casts out fear. Well, that perfect love is talking about the perfect love that Christ has for us. And so when we know how much he loves us, you know if somebody loves you that they're not going to let you get hurt. They're going to take care of you. And even if you go through something that's difficult, they're going to work it out for your good. Then you can begin to live on the other side of fear. But no matter how old you get or how many scriptures you know or how much experience you have in life, there's going to be times when fear is going to come against you. So the thing to learn is to feel fear is one thing. To be afraid is another. We can feel a lot of things, but we don't have to be what we feel. And so that was to me just such an eye-opening thing and it's become kind of a hallmark of my teaching that fear means to run from. When he told Joshua, fear not, fear not, he was basically telling him fear is going to come but when you feel it, don't run. So the key is, is wherever you're headed in life, all along the way, there's going to be different fears, fear of failure, 
fear of being rejected by people, fear of losing your friends. I mean, just fear, 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 fear. And today we're going to talk about a few of the fears that we want to try to avoid in our lives. But I just want to tell you a cute story. This past weekend, I was in Washington doing a conference and um, a lady was there that was 102 years old. Now, her first Joyce Meyer conference she attended when she was 100. <laughs> and she liked it so much, she came back to this conference. And she had her daughter with her, who obviously took care of her. But the woman was actually really in great shape. And so she was there on Friday night. She was back on Saturday morning at 9.30. She stayed for the Saturday afternoon 1.30 session. I mean, she didn't look worn out. She didn't look tired. She was taking notes. I mean, she was engaged. She was listening. Well, I know that there were probably 25-year-olds that woke up on Saturday morning. When they went to bed on Friday night, they thought, well, yeah, I'm going to go back tomorrow. And then they woke up on Saturday morning. They oh, I'm too tired. I think I'll go. <laughs> and so for her, she came because she'd made her mind up that was where she was going to be. And see, we have to make our minds up what we're going to do and stop letting how we feel determine whether we carry through or not. Well, they did a little interview with this lady, and um, somebody was telling me about it on the trip home. She watches my TV program every day, and they said, well, uh, her name was Louise. Louise, why, why do you like Joyce so much? And she said, listen to this. She said, well, I just feel like she has such a sense of adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought that was so amazing that 102, she is interested in adventure. So, obviously, she's taking chances. She's not just in this inactive, my life is over type attitude. How many people at 102 would be looking for some adventure and something new to do? So, surely, if she can do that, we can all get a little better attitude today. And you know what? I believe with all my heart that one of the reasons why she looked as good as she did and felt as good as she did was because of her mindset that she was really not too old to do anything. Now, I know most of you in here today, you're, you're real young, but let me tell you something. You'll get to the point where the enemy will suggest to you, well, you're just too old for that. And I believe that if we keep this sense of adventure, that we can do a lot of things that we would have never even imagined that we could do. But every time, every time you try to take a step, to do something more, something better, something bigger, fear will come and try to stop you. So you have to make a decision today that you're going to live courageously. You're not going to live fearfully. Now, I want to read you a little story in here. I started this book with this little letter that I made up. So this is how the book starts. Say goodbye to fear. Dear fear... <laughs> I only refer to you as dear because of our long-term intimate relationship. And certainly not because you are dear to me in any way. In fact, you've been a tormenting influence from start to finish. You've told me lies and prevented me from doing the things that I wanted to do and should have done. You are indeed a miserable, wretched companion and one that I am no longer willing to be involved with. <laughs> I'm writing you this letter to let you know that from this point forward, I will not fear. Although I may feel your presence, I will not bow down to your demands. I have a friend, you see, whose name is Jesus. And he has promised to never leave me nor forsake me. But he is always with me. He is indeed a powerful friend. And although you do have some power, his is far much greater than yours. You see, you can come against me, but Jesus lives in me. And the power of the one who is in me is greater than you. Although I cannot prevent you from coming to visit, <laughs> I do want to give you notice that from now on you will be ignored. I am far too busy fellowshipping with my friend Jesus and develop an intimate relationship with Him to give you any of my time. The more I spend time with Jesus, the more courageous I become. 
He is teaching me a new way to live, one that is exciting and adventurous, and one that is fearless. I will also inform you, and this is the part I want you to be sure you get, I will also inform you that since I've had so much experience with you, and know how self-defeating it is to listen to you, that I now intend to tell as many people as I can what a thief and a liar you are. The years I have wasted with you will be redeemed, and I will bear much good fruit. Thank you for driving me to Jesus. <laughs> you see, you made me so miserable that I sought a way to be free from you. And Jesus met me where I was, and he set me free. Should you decide to waste your time and try to visit me even after my letter, I am letting you know ahead of time that you will be met by faith in a God, in my God, and a determination that I will not fear. And then I put a little place there for people to sign their names. So maybe all of you need to send a breakup letter <laughs> to the spirit of fear. I mean, honestly, it might do good for you just to sit down and write one out in your own words and just make a declaration. This is it. I'm not going to live in fear anymore. If you come around and try to torment me, you are absolutely wasting your time. So in this book, there's, I mean, the story is just worth getting the book for. But, I mean, there's so many things in here. Insecurity. You know, I believe that insecurity today is like a, a of an epidemic proportion. Oh, my goodness. There's so many insecure people in the world. But our security is found in Christ. You don't have to determine your worth and value on who you know or what you look like or how perfectly you behave or where you were born or how you were treated when you were growing up. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away and all things become brand new. So I have some fears here that I've listed that I think that we need to avoid. So maybe some of this will just be eye-opening. First of all, the fear of evil. You know, David in Psalm 23 said, I will fear no evil. So I found in my own life that I always had, after coming out of the background that I came out of, I always had this vague feeling around me that something bad might happen at any moment. Anybody know what that's like? You know, sometimes when you've had a lot of bad stuff happen, you just get to the point where you're, afraid of it happening again. And you've been disappointed so many times that you actually don't even want to bother with expecting anything good because you don't want the disappointment of having to deal with it again. And I recall one time in the early years of mine and Dave's marriage when he asked me why I was so negative. And I said, well, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you're not disappointed when it doesn't. Well, I've come a long way. I've come all the way from that now to refusing to give up my hope because we are born again into an ever-living hope. And when you become, the Bible says in Zechariah, a prisoner of hope, meaning that you're locked up with hope, there's no way you can get away from having a hopeful attitude. The promise there is that God will give you double. He will restore double to you anything that you ever lost. But hope is very simple. It's a very simple definition. If you can get a hold of this, it can be life-changing. Hope means a positive expectation that something good is about to happen to me at any moment in my life. And every person watching today can have hope. You don't have to wait to feel hopeful. You don't have to wait to have a reason to hope. In Romans 4, the Bible says, All reason for hope men gone. Abraham hoped on in faith that he would see the fulfillment of of God's promises. In, in Proverbs 15, 15, it says, All the days of the desponding and the afflicted are made evil by anxious thoughts and forebodings. But he who has a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of his circumstances. So be careful about just having negative thoughts that something bad is about to happen. Let me tell you something. Even if something happens that you don't like, thinking about it ahead of time, He's not going to make it any easier to deal with. But if you have your mind on God and that no matter what comes, you can overcome it, then even when things do happen, you're ready for it. How about the fear of rejection? You know, Jesus told his disciples 
in Luke 10, whenever you go into a town and they don't receive and accept and welcome you, go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we are wiping off. I do a little teaching called Shake It Off. You know, he told them, when you go out and you start doing my will, you are going to be rejected by some people. You are going to be rejected. And what happens to a lot of people is, let's just say, maybe they hang out with this group of friends and they're all just going nowhere and they're just living lousy lives and doing all kinds of wrong things. And so one person decides that they want to get their life straightened out and they come into a relationship with Jesus. Well, if you, if you take a stand for your new life, the first thing that's going to happen is all of your old friends are not going to want anything to do with you anymore. Well, that's painful because right then that's all you know. That's your life. You feel like you've made one good choice and now everything wrong is happening to you. You know, sometimes we have the idea, well, you know, if, I, if I'm going to make a decision to serve God, then everything in my life should be, should be turned out good now. Well, it will, but it's not going to happen overnight. Think about this. How long did it take you to get into the messes that you're in? <laughs> so surely we can give God equal time that we gave to the enemy in serving him. Don't feel like that everything is going to change overnight. You're going to have to let God work with you and refuse to ever give up. So I love that. And then in verse 16, Luke 10, 16, he says, He who hears and heeds you, disciples, hears and heeds me. And he who slights and rejects you, slights and rejects me. And he who slights and rejects me, slights and rejects the one who sent me. And boy, I had to hang on to that a lot in the early days of my teaching ministry because I've been teaching for 42 years now. And when I started, women did not do what I'm doing. And if they did, there were some who accepted you, but it was not uncommon at all if I would get invited to a church for some of the men to get up and walk out. Well, that's hard to go through those kind of things because I just felt like I was just trying to do what I felt like God wanted me to do. Family rejected me. Friends rejected me. The circles that I was in, nobody did what I was doing. I just wonder how many people here today are willing to do something that nobody else has ever done before. I had a girl come up to me yesterday, and uh, I was actually in a nail shop getting my nails done and she, she came up to me and told me her story a little bit and she's in ministry and she ended her conversation by saying thank you for going before us and making a way for other women to follow. She said I know you paid a price and now I'm living in the benefits of that. Well you know what if you're willing to pay a price to have any kind of victory in your life somebody else that's coming up behind you will benefit from that victory. My children even still tell me, and I have four grown children, thank you for going through what you went through because I know that's why we have the life that we have today. So believe me, your life does affect other people. And if you stay broken, you're not going to be able to help anybody else. But if you'll let God heal you, then everything that the enemy did to you, God can redeem it. And he can work it out not only for your good, but for the good of somebody else. You know, Paul experienced rejection. And in 1 Corinthians 4, he said, As for me, personally, it matters very little to me that I should be put on trial by you or that you or any other human should investigate and question and cross-question me. I don't even put myself on trial. So what was Paul really saying? I don't care what you think. Maybe we should practice that today. Come on. I don't care what you think. Now say it like you mean it. Now, you know, we all want people to think well of us. And, we, you know, we wouldn't be too smart if we didn't. But the thing is, is ultimately you're going to have to decide if you're going to be a man pleaser or a God pleaser. <laughs> and if you're going to be a God pleaser, then I can pretty much promise you somewhere along the line and intermittently throughout your life, there's going to be people that are going to reject you. But Jesus said, if they reject you, they're rejecting me. Are they rejecting the one who sent me? How about a fear that things will never change? I think that's a big fear in people's lives. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. I love this scripture. And we especially thank God continually for this, 
that when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it is the word of God. Now listen to this. Which is effectually at work in you who believe. So what I get out of that, sometimes we read scriptures so fast we don't get out of them what God wants us to get out of them. But there's one sentence in there that I have drawn out of that that has helped me I don't know how many times. As long as I'm believing, God is working. As long as I'm believing, God is working. As long as you're believing, God is working. Can I tell you something today? God needs your faith in order to work. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. I was asking God just a couple of weeks ago, Oh God, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And I just heard very clearly in my spirit, I need your faith. We're not going to get anything from God going in fear and doubt and unbelief. We need to go in faith and no matter what it looks like, say, I don't care how long it takes, as long as I'm believing, I believe that God is working. There's nothing impossible with God. We all love that scripture. I mean, I don't care how many times I want to stand in the pulpit and quote that scripture. Everybody in the crowd is going to clap and cheer and get all excited. We want to believe that all things are possible with God. How, well, so some people are afraid that nothing will ever change, but then there's also times when we're afraid of change. <laughs> the thing that's interesting is we beg God for change. And then when it comes, it frightens us and we just want to keep things the same way that they always were. I, the Lord, will instruct you, Psalm 32, 8. I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. You know, there's a lot of things that you're going to come up against in life where you've never passed that way before. Many of you girls from the Mercy Home, you're about to embark on a whole new adventure and journey in your life. And a lot of things are going to change. First, God's changing you. And then a lot of things are going to change. But you're going to be learning how to deal with things in a brand new way. Handling situations that maybe you ran from before. So I just want to encourage you, don't be afraid of change because everything around us is always changing and you know what someday you'll look back and you will have changed so much that you won't even know that person anymore that you used to be a long 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 time ago when i talk about the little girl that was sexually abused by her dad now honestly i feel like that's somebody that i can barely remember somebody way from my past that i used to know that i don't even really know anymore how about this and i think this is a big one I really believe that this actually is a controlling factor in a lot of people's lives. How about the fear that you're not going to get what you want? <laughs> what if I trust God and he doesn't come through? Well, first of all, God always comes through. He may not give you what you want. I'm going to tell you today, you may not get what you want. So there's no point in being afraid of it because I'm telling you now it's going to happen from time to time. But the whole thing is, is if God doesn't give us what we want, he's always going to give us something better. <laughs> and see, right now, what you want is all you know how to want. And maybe you have limitations on what you believe can happen in your life. But God has no limitations. And so you may be asking for something little, and he wants to give you something big. You have not because you ask not. And I believe that we can live with that trust that, God, I want what you want more than I want what I want. You know, even Jesus. Father, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, your will be done and not mine. What was he saying? This is what I want. But if it's not what you want, then I want what you want more than I want what I want. You know what happens when you are afraid that you're not going to get what you want? You may try to trust God, but you always kind of have a backup plan. Just in case. 
God doesn't come through. And I think that God wants to say to you today, how about giving up the backup plan? How about not being a backseat driver anymore? <laughs> you know how you know how they are. I try to help Dave sometimes. <laughs> don't do this, don't do that. You know. God wants you to stop trying to tell him which way to go and how to do it. And having your little backup plan just in case God doesn't come through. He wants you to trust him with your whole heart. Now remember, fear is always going to come. But you don't have to let it control you. And then the last thing I'll talk about just a little bit is the fear of failure. I'm not going to say much about it, but, you know, there is no such thing as a failure if you just refuse to ever give up. The only way somebody can fail is if they quit trying. But if you'll live with a sense of adventure and say, I'm not going to let fear control me, and I don't care how many times you knock me down, I'm going to get up again. The righteous man falls, but he gets up again. Amen? All right, today we're offering the book that I told you about, Living Courageously. Who could not want this? I think everybody should want all of them, you know, because I wrote them all, so I didn't write them just for me, although I do like to read them once in a while. Uh, you can face anything. Just do it afraid. And we're offering this to you today for your gift to the ministry of any amount, and all the proceeds from today's offer, whatever you feel that God wants you to send in, is just going to go to help support our television ministry. I'm sure a lot of you have watched the TV program for a long, long time, and maybe you've never really given anything back. Maybe God's even put it on your heart many times, but you just haven't done it. Well, today you can make up for all those times you didn't do it and just do today everything that you should have done long time ago and didn't do yet we really need your help not only to help pay for the program you're watching but especially to reach out to new people because you know what a lot of people are hurting in a lot of places and so you can help me help them thank you so much for being with us today we love you and appreciate you god bless you